Welcome to Webinar Wednesday. We are excited to have EQ2 sponsor today's presentation, which is eligible for one CE credit from the ACI. At the conclusion of this webinar, you will be able to access a link that will take you to a quick survey. You will be able to download your certificate once you submit the survey. Before we begin today's webinar, I'd like to remind everyone that the first of our HTM mixers takes place next month, August 19th and 20th at the Omni Interlochen Hotel in Denver, Colorado. This event is supported by the Colorado Association of Biomedical Equipment Technicians. Join us for two days of networking, continuing education, and vendor engagement in a slightly modified, less crowded, and safer environment. Visit htmmixer.com for more information and to register for this event. Webinar Wednesday would like to thank our sponsor, EQ2. EQ2 HEMS, CMMS, transforms an HTM team's ability to improve everything they touch with the newly released version 8. Compliance and AEM guided directly by regulatory standards call center slash dispatch board with multi-level escalation based on time elapsed, location, problem shift, etc. Easy visibility into recalls and network security risks. Powerful analytics, on-demand PM creation, easy work order creation, advanced filtering and display of information on demand, powerful mobile app accessible even when disconnected from the network, complete equipment lifecycle management, and numerous integrations. For more information, visit www.eq2llc.com. Our presenters today are David Chambers, CBAT, Director of Facilities Management, Los Angeles County Department of Health Services, Harbor UCLA Medical Center, and Rich Sable, Product Manager of EQ2. David and Rich, when you're ready, please begin your presentation. Hi, everyone. My name is Rich Sable, EQ2's product manager. I've been working with EQ2 for three years and have over 35 years experience in the biomedical field. Today we're going to look at a case study from Los Angeles County on an enterprise solution for managing assets. Here with me today is David Chambers from LA County. David? Good afternoon, everyone. My name is David Chambers uh, from Harbor UCLA Medical Center. Harbor UCLA Medical Center is located in Torrance, California. Today, Harbor is a level one trauma center with 553 inpatient beds. The hospital resides on the 75 acre campus consisting of several outpatient support buildings. We have approximately one million square foot of building space. Harbor UCLA is a part of Los Angeles County Department of Health Services which is the second largest municipal health system in the nation. DHS is comprised of 26 health centers and four acute care hospitals. DSH cares for about 750,000 unique patient visits each year. So we'll, start, we'll examine the implementation of the project and you'll see as we go through the slides that changing your CMS is a lot more than just installing software. There's a lot of work involved with redoing business processes and workflows and data standardization, uh, changing your IT structure. Uh, so that's what we hope to accomplish. Uh, David, you want to tell us a little bit about the project beginnings? Yes, Rich. Our legacy management system was no longer supported and it resided on an old outdated server. Our IT department was threatening to shut it down about every three months. We were at risk of losing all of our equipment inventories and service histories, which was all stored on one hard drive. When I initially started looking for a replacement management software, it was only to meet the needs of the biomed section. So I attended several biomed conferences, including the Amy conferences, MD Expos, and a lot of the CMIA events seeking to find a new management system. I visited all the booths related to equipment management software, spoke to the test equipment vendors, trying to find a system that works seamlessly with their test equipment as well as a software package that worked well. I also asked my colleagues which system they were using, their pros and cons. This overall process took about a year to find the best solution. Just when I thought I was ready to request the purchase for this system and the related hardware 
I was promoted to management within the facilities management department. At our facility, Biomet reports to facilities. So once in my new position, I quickly discovered the facilities management section also needed some attention as work, as well as far as, as uh, equipment management software. Although it was not obsolete, it was just very basic. I now need to reanalyze what software would suffice for both divisions. Since I've already done the research, I was able to quickly make a recommendation and I presented the HEM software package by EQ2 to my leadership. In most projects, you'll find that the, you set out on one path, but before you know it, your scope will change and there'll be other complexities coming up. And David will now share with us uh, how this project has evolved from a one site single CMMS into an enterprise solution. Implementing any change at one facility can be tough. I was told that I need to consider this project as an enterprise solution for all the DHS facilities. Well, at that time, all the hospitals were using different software from an in-house highly modified version to a basic off-the-shelf system. I now need to get buy-in from all the four DHS acute hospitals, facilities, and biomed sections. In addition, I also need to include the discussions uh, with the IT department. As you know, IT has its own concerns when it comes to implementing new software as it relates to security and support. DHS upper management realized there was not a method to obtain equipment information across the enterprise without making several phone calls or emails asking each facility what's in their database. And thus, the enterprise solution idea was conceived. I held several meetings with our IT department, our sister hospitals, as well as with the vendor. I also hosted live presentations so the vendor could demonstrate the software's features, discuss the enterprise vision, and answer any questions we would have. I think that's when the first light bulb turned on for leadership. How could they use this enterprise platform to manage equipment inventory, equipment contracts, equipment resources across the DHS department? With an access to this data, DHS leadership can now effectively look at equipment lifecycle management as well better purchasing practices by leveraging purchase power across the enterprise and cost of ownership versus leasing. With that said, the project received their approval of the DHS leadership and an implementation team was formed. Thank you, David. And as a, David has highlighted, you could see a lot of the different areas and it was the perfect opportunity to uh, expand the enterprise system and the, the, the pivotal role that IT is going to have at your selection uh, and influence also with your uh, CMMS of support and implementation. Uh, there's a lot of concerns now actually with the cybersecurity uh, and network information and limited resources uh, with the IT department themselves as everybody's implementing their uh, EMRs. So uh, it's a lot to be aware of. And I will look at some of the increased complexities of the four hospitals uh, that we encountered during the project. Uh, David? Well, Rich, now the real fun starts. If you ever complete any major project, you know, there's always going to be hurdles to clear and bridges to build and cross. Just imagine four hospitals with facilities management, a biomed, and an IT representative discussing how the project should be implemented. I can honestly say it went better than I expected. We need to be very good listeners to understand how each department functioned and what requirements were needed to make this work. We realized quickly we all operated differently. Our approach was to let the IT department focus on the issues related to software, server configurations, and network security, while the facilities and biomed folks would focus on what was needed to address all daily and equipment management activities. From this, the Best Practice Committee was formed. And equally, uh, EQ2 had the very similar approach where we broke our implementation teams into uh, distinct units uh, where our IT specialists work with the local and the enterprise IT departments in building the system and configuring desktops. Uh, and we had a, an individual project manager for the biomed group, uh, which was myself, uh, and our facilities director uh, working with the facilities teams. So this is a uh, very well coordinated event. 
we're not sure if we're putting in any kind of a new CMMS. As we mentioned, uh, it's a lot more than just installing software. It's a time to redo your data and some of your PM procedures and uh, even your areas of responsibility and your service level agreements and trying to come into a, a big cohesive model. Uh, David will now explain uh, some of the implementation here around uh, the data standardization. Well, Rich, standardization is more than a word. It's actually a goal. The level of detail needed to set up a data by database, yet simple, is complex. When it comes to making decisions for your hospital, having the opportunity to structure your data, for many of us, was not the norm. We simply used what was provided and made it work. This is a fun process to include all the wish list things you always wanted before in a database. But because we did not always come to one common solution for all issues, we decided some things should be left for each facility to decide on in order to have some flexibility. We can always revisit them later uh, to discuss and work into the program. During scheduled weekly online meetings, each facility would realize that the logic applied to each other's database varied quite a bit. Example, the equipment nomenclatures we were using, say for a monitor versus patient monitor versus ECG monitor. Uh, there's several other samples of this. We all just kind of call the equipment things a little differently. This is why the best practice committee is such an important role. Although we wanted each facility to have some flexibility, we still need to keep boundaries if there was any hope for true standardization. The best practice committee is important to maintain the basic framework of the program that provide DHS leadership the information needed for equipment management across the enterprise. And as you can see, even the uh, LA County project manager, as we all work together as a team in a group, the, the key thing was to involve everyone into this process and not let any uh, institution out. So we, we did hold these meetings on site on the uh, Harbor UCLA campus, uh, one of the meetings. Uh, for those who can attend live, uh, we were uh, present uh, and then we also had web conferences going on as well for those who uh, couldn't make the live meeting. So everybody had their voice uh, in as we came across these new terms and service level agreements. Uh, we had voting and then uh, David would uh, act as uh, a moderator and uh, being that persuasive voice to kind of focus into one term as necessary. One of the key areas uh, that we've identified first uh, was work order standardization. A lot of things with work order standardization was the service level agreements such as response and close time, uh, coming up with common work order types, work order status, and of course the, the coding of the work orders themselves. Uh, David and I'll present uh, more details on this process as we uh, implement it across uh, LA County. The best practice committee will always work towards true standardization of all the data elements. Each facility has HIMSS functioning and all their data entered, but it's difficult to think of every detail in advance when implementing new software. We discover new opportunities to manage the equipment and daily hospital activity data that you did not have before in your previous versions. Facilities data and daily activities are far more complex than that of biomed. Coming from my biomed background, this is something I didn't foresee. The daily methods to document and capture all physical hospital events require heavy usage of work order types, work order status, and subcodes. The first thing that we agreed upon in the early best practice meetings was the standardization of work order priorities and response times. Although we all may function a little differently, we all agreed that responding to the needs of the patients and the organizations was a top priority. So we established a criteria which was incorporated into the HEMS program throughout the enterprise. I use this data to report to my hospital's leadership on a monthly basis in an effort to imp improve communication through the work order process. We are continuing to learn with each event how to incorporate better methods of documentation using the program. Thank you, David. And after work order standardization and process improvement, we've we moved into some of the uh, even processes themselves of the workflows uh, since there was some new software 
uh, in different ways of documenting uh, things for biomed, such as unable to locate, uh, coming up with the different uh, standardized PM procedures and scheduling, uh, and as mentioned earlier, uh, even the equipment uh, nomenclature. Uh, David, want to tell us a little more details on the process standardization and workflows? Yes, well, definitely workflows need to be created to take advantage of the benefits that a robust data management system can provide. For instance, our Carl Center need, staff need to become familiar with the new system to create procedures to address the new web request function, which we did not have prior. This was a big improvement for us to have a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week method of receiving new work requests for common repairs during the times we experience a high call volume or during office off hours. We need to train our staff and facilities on how to properly document outcomes of work orders in a system. We've gone from a simple entry of completed in the action desk to detailed entries using subcodes, freehand text, and electronic signature with a time and date stamp. These little things make it easier to answer follow-up uh, questions regarding work orders to our customers and provide details of the repair, establish repair trends based on equipment types, locations, employees, and even the requesters. Combine this information into a report you can make informed decisions and draw relevant conclusions when it comes to the maintenance, scheduling, and performance, and even job performance of your system. And we also have tools built into the HEMS Enterprise product. Now, one of our big tools is the HEMS Best Practice Area. Well, one of the nice functionalities of this module uh, in the program is that it allows the employees to enter data uh, and even new data. And they could still work and complete their work orders, assign and create PM schedules, but the terminology that's changed and it might be different from the normal system would get elevated in that best practice area where leadership could then approve those terms. Uh, David will now discuss some of the uh, processes with the best practice meetings and using this to uh, help standardize the data throughout the county. Yes, Rich, the best practice module is kind of the holding tank for everyone's needs and ideas. Since we agreed to allow each facility to make some changes to incorporate their daily functional needs, this module keeps track of all the changes until the committee meets and adopts them all to for use or and everyone else to have access to. We're constantly adding to this reservoir as we receive new equipment types need for procedural changes or compliance related modifications. The best practice committee has been divided into two sections, one for facilities and the other for biomed. Representatives from each realm holds meetings to discuss enterprise solutions monthly and exchange ideas, tips, and discoveries on how to use the software effectively. Standardization being the ultimate goal, we also look at some commonality when it comes to device nomenclature using ASHI tables as a standard whenever possible. This will align our database with the industry practices worldwide. And for many of you who might not be uh, familiar with EQ2, our only vertical is the healthcare model. And EQ2 was founded from a grant from the Kellogg Foundation, the University of, Mount of Vermont, and ASHI. Uh, and part of the ASHI system, we have the ASHI standards in our system. So we could mix uh, and match uh, existing terms to the ASHI terms, that's also another benefit to the uh, CMMS user because the ASHI terms actually come with uh, PM procedures or proper depreciation tables from the American Hospital Association uh, and ECRI information. So this is a, another advantage uh, in choosing uh, our CMMS solution and helping towards data standardization. You now David will discuss some of the improved management and reporting outcomes that he's benefited through the HEM system. Uh, David? Thanks, Rich. Well, in our business, positive outcomes are good things. I believe with proper planning, a diverse research group, and a robust system, we can routinely achieve positive outcomes in our industry. Reporting these outcomes require good information, which requires good data. A management system must allow you to capture key data effortlessly. This data may seem very routine independently, but combined in the proper format becomes powerful information. 
The tracking and scheduling of fire drills, daily elevator inspections, and daily automatic door inspections becomes very easy and allows us to quickly identify issues that affect daily operations at our facilities and pinpoint the first signs of trouble. We can also plan for equipment replacement based upon the service history and downtime reports. Another uh, realization uh, for improvement uh, with the HEMS Enterprise system was in project organization. And I'll let David explain uh, further about some of the improvements he's uh, realized through projects in HEMS Enterprise. Uh, David? Yes. Yes, thank you. Like any facility our size and age, we always seem to have minor to major renovation projects occurring. We needed a way to manage our internal work efforts relating to these projects that could provide concurrent costs. By use of the unique subcodes, we identify project activity for each trade and quickly run reports to capture costs and project progress. But this information allows us to make decisions impacting the budget or timelines effectively. This is a new function for us. In the past, we often did not document this consistently. We look forward to our new possibilities as we move on with more projects. Thank you, David. And it was also uh, an enterprise impact as well uh, with the new system. Uh, besides Harvard and UCLA, this now uh, transformed the way that data data work is done uh, throughout the organization. Uh, David, can you elaborate, please? Sure. As the full implementation at all locations is completed, each facility is still finding ways to leverage the system to provide the information needed for the day-to-day -day operation. With all the methods of capturing data, we continue to find ways to make improvements and modify our past practices and ways to create detailed cost reports. Eventually, the combined data from each DHS hospital will be leveraged to make decisions that will impact the entire enterprise. I'm sure new purchasing and maintenance strategies will be developed to benefit the entire department as well. So in addition to the uh, other benefits of the HEMS Enterprise solution throughout uh, LA County, there were other outcomes uh, comes available as well. Uh, it's associated with costs and improved quality, uh, learning some good lessons and uh, best practices as well. Uh, David, can you please uh, describe some of these for the audience? Sure, Rich. The concept of an enterprise solution should achieve all the bullet points in this slide. Reduced costs will result from each facility having different software and varying annual support costs or maintenance fees. All of the DHS hospitals and the service areas on the single platform allows us all to function more efficiently following the recommendations of the best practice groups to achieve uniformity in our work methods. Combining the totality of this effort, there will be a resounding and consistent improvement in the quality of care and the support to the hospitals and surrounding clinics. We learn from the past practices that we'll never be as good independently as we will be together. This is a common operational practice in our industry used by other healthcare organizations. So after the uh, implementation of the hospitals, uh, and this involved adding uh, High Desert and LAC USC to the mix. So now there was a total of six of the LA County hospitals uh, supply chain decides to enter the picture, uh, and they've had this approach of, of cradle to grave asset management, a term that was framed by uh, David as we were doing this project. And those, as you could imagine, uh, this required some program changes since this was the first time a supply chain was using uh, CMMS. There was uh, reporting changes, dashboards uh, customized to seeing data the way they want to see it and what makes sense to them uh, on a business use, uh, and even mobility products so they could do their inventory reconciliation. Uh, but I'll let David uh, describe a little more detail about the supply chain uh, integration. Thank you, Rich. Well, with our hospitals moving closer towards the alignment of our work methods and operational efficiencies, there was another piece of the puzzle that was needed. To properly manage assets, you need to include those who control them. We've been working on this part of the puzzle for about two years. I thought facilities and biomed were complex. Supply chains adds another new layer to this. Integrating supply chains into the whole equipment maintenance asset management conversation makes perfect sense from an enterprise perspective. 
working hand in hand with supply chains will provide a complete picture of the asset management part. We'll be able to manage a device complete history from purchase to salvage. All information, including purchase documentation, warranty, service history, parts purchase, equipment movement, current status, recall alerts, and retirement can all be captured. This is a powerful data in the right hands. One could look across the entire enterprise and obtain inventories on any device type. Use that data to negotiate service contracts, future replacement forecasting, or just relocate equipment to better utilize where you have a need. Together, we are a stronger organization. Uh, this is a really good piece to have to your management system. Thank you, David. And so getting further into the cradle to grave asset management, uh, we understand now with the enterprise system, it was very easy for biomed and facilities to report across their entire organizations, uh, all six hospitals. And any senior manager could request information and they could retrieve it on demand and deliver it. Uh, but there's still that little wait wait time in contacting managers and having reports uh, emailed. Uh, so with the supply chain piece, this gave upper management now that ability to look down at any line of service and report and get information about the assets throughout the entire county. Now we know that after your budgetary meetings and your uh, capital equipment approvals, everything is ordered. But the asset's birth really starts when it hits the loading dock, hence the cradle. Uh, things that were uh, reconciled were now the vendors uh, were now consolidated throughout the county using the actual or real vendor as we should say many times in biomed or facilities it's a uh, it's close but it might be an educated guess uh, but supply chain always has that key information so that became uh, an advantage as they updated that information into the cmms and supply chain and biomed and facilities are using the same terms uh, they were now able to determine who has uh, like assets. So now if one location is replacing patient monitors, it was very easy to see, was it all six hospitals or four hospitals that might have been using the same equipment? Uh, there was improved data governments through the best practice module and having the committee uh, approving the terms of knowing the correct ownership uh, for equipment. Many times, uh, I'm sure many of you as biomeds as myself have been uh, in a unit working on a piece of equipment, wasting uh, one or two hours only to find out the device is in hospital loan. Somebody says, no, that's a lease or that's a demo or a contract. Or maybe after going through an hour of tech support, uh, somebody asks for a serial number and they make the determination. Uh, but now this information is entered right up front uh, when supply chain, because they have the records, they know what's under contract release uh, or what's a demo and that's put right into the inventory. Uh, supply chain improved their inventory reconciliation process. As I mentioned, we've had to do some design changes and now with their tablet application, they can confirm proper location and that the device exists uh, all electronically without having to uh, check off on different forms and they can schedule these inventories to help them reduce their inventory time. It also had improved functionality for offsite and warranty repairs. And now the exact locations were always changed. Uh, Biometer facilities would mark things going down to the, the warehouse or the loading dock. Uh, then the warehouse people would indicate the location being offsite. And then finally, when it would arrive again, it was back to being the loading stock. And then Biometer facilities would indicate that it went back to the department. So there was a lot more workflow as equipment left and came back to the system. We were able to get all kind of uh, metrics and KPIs about cost of ownership, uh, failure rates and downtimes, uh, easily able to identify devices with protected health information. So then supply chain or biomatter facilities would know to notify IT for data sterilization. So this was great for uh, improving HIPAA compliance. And then of course, at the end of any product's life, when the department head or biometer facilities makes that determination that the device should be replaced, uh, we finally come down to the retirement or salvage process, which of course uh, is the grave. There are many other additional workflows we had to look at as we were implementing supply chain. Uh, one of the key things uh, was, was having all the different people at the 
process meetings. So we spent about a good 30 days of testing, going through all the various scenarios and seeing every type of function that they've applied uh, with assets uh, besides owning uh, and buying things, uh, leasing and repairing uh, the salvage processes. And one of the very instrumental and eye-opening pieces, I think, to the entire group was the gray box uh, about the sending out for repair. Uh, very, uh, it was a thing that was really a big disconnect between uh, what supply chain new biometer facilities was doing. And I'll let David elaborate on some of these other workflows with the supply chain instance. Thanks, Rich. So again, like I said, having supply chains now in the mix was, was really good, I think, overall for our upper management to now truly be able to manage where the equipment is. And I'm sure some of the other folks out there have been involved or got those phone calls from supply chains asking where equipment is located. Uh, this way, with the new system, we're able to keep the locations of the equipment updated and supply chains having access to the program to simply look in and see where it is and run reports on their own. Um, that eliminates a lot of time when we're out searching for this big stack of paper we have for capital assets. So one of the big things uh, for supply chains as well as facilities is having that up-to-date inventory list with locations. And I know that as systems became more complex and more user-friendly, we're able to better manage the assets. And that's one of the big pictures things for uh, DHS upper management is to be able to see across the enterprise what's there and what's not there, what needs service, what doesn't need service, and also um, to determine when it's no longer here and are we paying for service for equipment that we've salvaged. So definitely an important function and it definitely is completes this package for us. Yep, thank you, David. Uh, and as you can imagine, there was probably at least six months of uh, system analysis and business process design done in this phase and figuring out uh, how to roll it out without becoming overwhelming for the end user. Uh, a CMMS is very common for biomed facilities, but not so much for supply chain folk. And so by breaking down all these bars, as you can see, into the different processes, we kind of determined where do different users have to touch the program. And that really came down to maybe only training different groups on two or three aspects of the program and then limiting their view because we can control the views uh, in the HEMP system to only seeing the information uh, that's required of them without becoming overwhelming. Uh, even uh, uh, enhancing things such as service contracts or knowing when extended contracts are repaired or are purchased uh, during a new uh, inventory or when existing equipment might be going under contract. So we, we just only had to train buyers and asset management, warehouse personnel uh, on their respective part of the program. And one of the final phases now, and it's uh, nearing uh, implementation now is IT is going to be joining. Uh, these would be the missing assets of the organization uh, with supply chains, inventory, biomed, and facilities. Naturally, your uh, IT assets were the only ones that were missing. Uh, we're working with the teams now and getting their uh, information into the system and discussing with their server group uh, how they would want to integrate with their end light server management which is a cmdb or a configuration management database uh, and how that would be linked to hems what data they want to have in the hem system uh, as they uh, retire or salvage or move assets uh, within that organization how it's going to prove here uh, this was also uh, one of the visions uh, david had and I'd to have david comment on anything with the it piece well, as Rich mentioned, this was one thing that was not initially in the conversations at the beginning. Uh, but then as we we're moving through the process, we uh, noticed that there was a need in the IT department. And again, they need to manage their assets a little bit better because the county overall was looking at the expenses for replacing new computers and monitors. Everyone wanted the bigger screen. Everyone wanted the faster or smaller computer. And they were looking at the overall cost, but no one really had a true inventory of what was out there. So during the middle of the process, uh, IT was you know, kind of lingering around and asking questions. And eventually 
uh, they made a commitment to join the process. So we welcome the IT uh, folks into the fold, and now this will really be a complete system, managing not only the capital assets in the hospital, uh, now actually managing the resources that are in the these departments, not just medical equipment, not just capital assets, but now computers, and if it goes down to printers and everything else, we'll have a true database, one-stop shopping. So I anticipate this continue to grow again as we move forward. There may be other areas to identify, uh, to manage assets. It may be vehicles next. Who knows what's coming? Yeah, that's a great point, David. Thanks, because <laughs> there's there's very little assets left after this, and it was very uh, the IT system really required very minimal. Uh, to no modifications since uh, HIMSS Enterprise has a very robust uh, IT section that could accommodate all their different data fields for IPs, MAC addresses, subnets, VLANs, uh, wall jacks, uh, software, uh, patches, uh, wireless information, uh, everything uh, that basically you would want to have uh, known about computer information. Uh, so this will uh, really be a big benefit for uh, the IT group now to have a, a standardized way to not only have their assets inventoried, uh, gain some uh, workflows with the work order system, uh, but it'll just uh, make the inventory process that much easier as well since supply chain uh, does also check these assets as well. So they'll all be inventoried in the, in the system. I want to thank everyone for uh, paying attention uh, to our video. Sorry we couldn't see you all in person. Uh, I want to thank David very much for his time in helping GQ2 uh, and share his uh, insights on the project of implementing the asset management system throughout LA County. Thank you very much, David. Well, thank you, Rich, and thank EQ2 for being such an excellent partner to the County of Los Angeles. Thanks and uh, goodbye, everyone. Uh, we're not here live for Q&A, but uh, you can see our email addresses. Uh, and this video will be on the MD Expo site. So you could always freeze this frame if you need to contact us for any other information. Uh, thanks again for watching. Bye. Stay safe. Bye. Thank you, David and Rich. A quick reminder for our attendees today to obtain your certificate for one C credit from the ACI please remember to click the link lo located below this webinar title to complete today's survey. If you have any questions, you can reach us at webinars at mdpublishing.com.